Praise the Lord. Great change for you today. And the Lord will take you from where you are to where you never thought you will be. And praise the Lord. I'm still young enough to see you. When you get to that place, I'll be there to shake your hand. Today, I just praise the Lord for such youth as we have in on those stage. I was watching all through that time. You were sitting down. You were soaking in the word. And the word of God was entering, penetrating into your brain, your mind, your heart, your spirit, your soul. The rain was falling. And then it's like you are saying, never mind, rain come, knowledge come. Rain come, vision come. Rain come, change come. It has happened to you already. You cannot be in that rain and just stay like that cool with faith, expecting something, something must happen. Are you there? Yes. All right, let me see you there. Father, in Jesus' name, I bring everyone, the youths, the young adults, the young professionals, even fathers and mothers, everyone here today, I pray that great change from heaven will come upon everyone in Jesus' name. Turn every life around. Amen. Wipe all the tears away. Amen. Change everything changeable and shake everything shakeable out of every life in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray, Lord, everyone here will have something definite from heaven. That you take and carry go out of this place and your life will never be the same again. Yeah. That platform, that peak that the Lord has ordained from all eternity that you will get to everyone without exception. This day, every hindrance is taken away. Yeah. You'll be there in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, I pray. God bless you. You can sit down. I'm reading to you from 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and in verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. It says, but we all, you included, Everyone around you included. We all with open face. Beholding in a glass the glory of the Lord. We all, each and all, looking, beholding the glory of the Lord. It says, as we behold, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory. My son there, glory to glory. My daughter, from glory to glory. Even as by the Spirit of the Lord. In that verse, there is a word in the middle there. Change. It says, we are changed. What kind of change are we expecting? What kind of change are you expecting as you come here today? Number one, a great change from rags to riches. You started at the very bottom. All you have now, rags, a change is coming. Rags to riches. Number two, from rejection to recognition. Rejection. Who wants you there? 
who wants to have you there. It's like you're rejected. Enter this place, rejected. Enter that place, rejected. It changes coming from rejection to recognition. Number three is from regrets to rejoicing. You regretted almost everything in life. I regret my action. I regret my path. I regret my background. A change has come. From regrets to rejoicing. Number four, from retardation. I always at the back of the queue. I want to do this. You want to run. Your energy is not there. You want to rise up. And the rising spirit is not there. Always in retardation. From retardation to restoration. Restoration has come in Jesus' name. We talk about a change. What kind of change? Number five, from reproach to respect. That's a reproach in your life. The people that look at you, they belittle you, you, they look down on you. Is it not so and so? Is it not such and so? We know her history. We know his history. Things are going to change today. From reproach to respect. Number six, you are, you are like a car, they just park there. Nobody even touches you. And nobody relates with you. Number six, from rusting to raining. Instead of rusting away, rotting away, as if, you know, you'll be there going from bad to worse, from worse to worse, from rotting, rusting, you are going to rain. Look at this. Number, number seven is from retrogression to reactivation. That thing in you that has stopped walking, the wheel in your restored that has so stopped moving, and the wheel of life that has stopped in your life, and it's like always retrogressing, the battery is going down. Can I have a charger there? There is no charger, and the thing is almost running out to zero level. From that zero, you'll become a hero. From retrogression to reactivation. Great change. That's why we're here today. For the Almighty to look at you, turn your life around, there will be a great change. Anybody waiting for any great change over there? It will happen. Number one, number one, change from victim to victor. From a victim, you know, I'm there. What they did to me and what, uh, you know, the impact they had in my life. I've been a victim of this, a victim of this, a victim of that. That's how you came. A change from being a victim to being a victor. A change from bitter to better. You know, you've been bitter because you think, look at what that teacher did to me. Look at what my parents did to me. Look at what my neighbors did to me. They ruined my life. That I cannot do anything now. From that bitterness, you'll come to a better situation. And I want you to write down this. Beta, 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 beta. You know, it's only one letter of the alphabet different. I and E. I and E. And that I... The eye that has gone through the bitterness of life, Emmanuel will come to your life. Yeah. You'll be better today. No more bitter in Jesus' name. Yeah. Number three, conquered to conquer. Everything conquered you. English language conquered you. You just couldn't make up the sentences. Mathematics conquered you, flawed you. You just couldn't put all that equation. They call it quadratic equation. I don't know how to solve that. Everything conquered you. Chemistry conquered you. You couldn't balance anything. That they say this and this. And then when you have the reaction, it breaks down that result. Chemistry conquered you. Physics conquered you. How the light will shine and then the rays and this and that and the refraction, reflection. I don't understand. They conquered you. But now, from that position of being conquered, you become a conqueror. Yeah. Am I talking to a conqueror there today? <laughs> Change has come. Yeah. 
From number four is from average to achiever. From the average to achiever, you'll not be a pack, you'll not be a pack, part of the pack anymore. The Lord will single you out. Something unique will happen in your life because you'll come, there'll be a change from being average to achiever. Number five, from pardon to purity. He pardons you. And then he says, you'll not stay at that level. He'll take you higher and he'll move you from pardon to purity. Number six, he'll move you from purity to power. Power in your life. I want to hear a youth. Amen. Amen. Because when power comes, all those cockroaches that used to threaten your life, all the scorpion that used to threaten your life, all the sickness that used to threaten your life, I'm a Christian, but I'm sick. I'm a Christian, but I'm down. I'm a Christian, but I'm lonely. I'm a Christian, but I cannot achieve. That thing will be driven away out of your life. Because you're coming out of purity now, the purity is still there at the foundation. Power in your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Number seven is from power to performance. Performance. That's the change. You know, somebody has had the gift there in the head, in the mind, and he had the vision and the dream, but it's not performing anything. This day will be a day of great change. And you will be a performer. Where is he? Where is she there? A performer. Yeah. This stage will recognize you. Yeah. This nation will recognize you. Yeah. The world will know that you were born at this time. You schooled in that place. And you got that job. And then as you rise up and you perform. This world, when they are writing the history of the progress of the stage, of the nation, of the world, in this area and this area, what's your name? I said, what's your name? Your name will come into the book. The book of achievers and the book of performers. Now, I told you, today we're talking about the gateway to the great change. The great change is available. But it's a gate. The gateway. And then today, uh, if I could come to you there and personally hold your hand, get you up, and then move and say, this is the gate. Go through this gate you'll meet the great change on the other side. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you instruction how you can stand up, get to the gate, and get through the gateway, and the great change will come in your life. I'm talking to that son, that daughter, online, and I'm telling you, pay attention. Get yourself glued to the system you are looking at, and pay attention. In a few minutes, you'll get out of where you are. And you will get to that great change in Jesus' name. Three things we're talking about as we're talking about the change. The gateway to the great change. Very simple. Number one, behold. Number two, believe. Number three, begin. Very simple. Everyone can do that. Those are not jaw-breaking words that I say. I don't know how to pronounce that. I don't know how to get to that. You will get to that. The moment will come in your life that everything you behold, all the heroes you behold, all the masters you behold, all the mentors you behold, all the people up high that you behold, you will become like them. Yeah. The time comes in your life that what you believe will happen to the most cherished person on earth. 
The time will come when you stop looking at other people. They can, they can, I cannot. You will look inward. And the Lord will tell you, I made you for a special purpose here on earth. And that special purpose will be fulfilled. That's why you are here today. You are not here by accident. You believe. And then something better than you ever thought about in your life will happen in your life. And then, number three, you begin. No matter what I tell you, no matter what you hear, if you don't begin, you will never be able to get there. Do you remember when you were born, a baby, you couldn't walk? You saw daddy and mommy and brothers and sisters walking. You desired, you wanted to, but you never started walking until you began. You have to begin. You might begin, you get up and you fall. You get up again. You begin the alphabet. You didn't know the difference between A and E and D and P. But you began, and it is in beginning what the alphabet. That's where you, you are, where you are today. You began, you have to begin speaking. And when you started speaking, you began. You didn't do it perfectly, but look at you today. The perfect will come into your life. Yeah. Three things. Number one, behold in order to become. Behold, in order to become. Number two, believe for the better. Believe. You have to believe for the better. I will not always be like this, as poor like this. I will not always be as ignorant as this. I will not always be as unproductive like this. You believe for the better. Number three, you begin so as to benefit. You begin so as to benefit all the talents you have, all the gifts you have, all the opportunities you have, all the open doors you have, all the ideas that will come. You have to begin and then you have the benefits. I'm praying for you while I'm preaching to you that every good thing you hear today will be transferred into your life. And the power and the finance and the helpers that will lift you up and take you to the place where you will be. The Lord will connect you with them. Look at number one. Number one, behold in order to become. And look at John chapter 1 verse 29. It says, the next day you'll see Jesus coming unto him. And says, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. I'm sure you've heard that before. But what I want to tell you is, every sick person that got healed beheld the Lamb. Every person that was in sin, changed in sin, and became saved, they beheld the Lamb. We have to behold. And when you behold, you will become what God has created you to become. Give me a good amen. amen. Look at Isaiah chapter 40, and I'm reading from verse 9. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 9, here it tells us, it says, O Zion, that bringest good tidings, get thee up not down, you will go up into the high mountain of Jerusalem that bringeth good tidings. It says, lift up thy voice or strength. Lift it up. Be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, behold your God. We have to behold our God and then as we behold him, we we'll see his love. We we'll see his passion for us. We we'll see his purpose of creation. We we'll behold him. 
and things from the moment you begin to behold your God, things will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Look at John chapter 19 verse 9. Verse 5. John chapter 19, reading there from verse 5. Then came Jesus forth wearing the crown of thorns and the purple of uh, the purple robe. And Pilate says unto them, Behold the man. Behold the man. Look at Jesus. Look at our Savior. Look at our Redeemer. Behold the man and then uh, what we read already second corinthians chapter 3 and in verse 18 uh, but we all no exception young and old we all with open face we're not covering a face with a veil with open face beholding uh, us in a glass the glory of the lord are changed is by beholding him Beholding the Lord, beholding the God of heaven, by looking at him, beholding him, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Today, as you behold the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord will come to you right there. He'll change you. He'll transform you. You just discover that you are able to climb the mountains you couldn't climb before. You are able to solve the problems you are not able to solve before. You are able to see the open door where you couldn't see an open door before because there is going to be a change as you behold. Amen. Amen. What and who do I behold? For what reason, for what purpose do I behold? Number one, behold the man as your mediator. Behold the man. His name is Jesus. As your mediator. is the one that will plead for you. And no matter what you have done, how guilty you might have felt. You might have gone off the line. Behold the man as your mediator. And today, he will mediate for you. He will forgive your sin. He will change your life. And even the thought of doing all those foolish things will get away from your life. Number two there is to behold the master. Behold the master. How as your model? Behold your master as your model. If there is no model to follow, if there is no master to live after, if there is no standard that we are thinking about, we'll just be blank. Nobody has ever done that. And I don't know how I can do that. I want my, my life to be remodeled. How do I do that? Behold the master. is the master of those who adore and then he brings them to the platform of intelligence. Behold the master as your model. What will Christ do? How will Christ talk? If Christ had this challenge, will he give up? Or will he say, I will do it. My father that sent me is always with me. The father will always be with you. Number three, behold his mercy for every man. Behold his mercy for every man. Look at that, Zacchaeus. Look at the mercy of God. Save him. Look at Saul, that injurious man. And the Lord saved him only by mercy. Only by mercy are you saved. It's not the work of our hand. I'm good. No, you are not. I'm high. No, you are not. I'm righteous. No, you are not. How can I be saved then? By his mercy. Anytime the thought is coming to you that you're sinful, you're bad, you're evil, you're conquered, you never do well, 
don't, don't say, no, I am good. Just behold his mercy. And today, the mercy of God is coming to you. Amen. He'll forgive you. You say, I've gone into drugs. I've gone into this and that. Yes, I understand. I know how you feel. I know you say you're helpless. Maybe nothing can be done, but behold his mercy. And the mercy is for every man. For me. Where are you? For me. That mercy will reach you there today. Number four, behold his majesty. Behold his majesty. There is nothing he finds difficult. There's nothing he finds impossible with our God. He's so majestic. All things are possible with him. He can take this life. I'm talking about you. He can take you from the pit. He can take you from the valley. He can take you from the dungeon and take you to the mountaintop. That's how majestic he is. Behold his majesty for your miracle. For your miracle. Miracle coming your way. A miracle of change. A miracle of transformation. And then, number five, behold his marks for your meditation. His mark, the mark of love. Behold his marks. And uh, don't, don't just uh, say, I know he loves me. Stay on that. And look at that mark. The mark of the Lord. He is impartial. Whosoever comes, he will receive. Behold that mark. He is a changer of our lives. He can change my life. Behold that mark. And meditate on it. And think of it. If the devil has been making you to think about your life, my life is a wreck. My life is down. My life is unpresentable. Anywhere you are meditating on the wrong thing. Meditate on his marks for your upbringing. And for your change, the change in your life. Number six is to behold his mission. Behold his mission. What's his mission? I came to seek and save that that was lost. That's his mission. Behold that. Look at that. I'm lost. That's why Christ came. I'm down. That's why Christ came. I've gone beyond rectitude. That's why Christ came. I don't think in my strength, in my power, I can make it again because I've tried and tried and tried and tried and nothing seems to the walking. Behold his mission that he came to seek. He came to look for you. He says he specializes in changing lives. And that's his mission. And then as you behold his mission, you say, now, I give myself to you. Whatever you can make out of this life that is ruined, make it. And the Lord will make you a new man, a new woman, a new boy, a new girl, a new professional, a new personality. Amen. Amen. Number seven, behold the maker. Behold the maker. How for your making. He's going to take up your life and he's going to make you what he purposed originally that you will be. And I will be. I will be. I will be. What my maker has ordained originally that I will be. I don't see anybody here that is reaching off. I don't see anybody here that has gone so far that God says he gives up. He never gives up on any of us. He has not given up on you. See, he has not given up on me. Behold the maker for your making. The thing there is that we behold. And as we behold his glory, as we behold his marks, as we behold what he is, then 
It will change us from glory to glory. Now, as you are there, I want you to think what are the things in your life you want a change for. Just, just think about it, your life. What's important to you right now? I want a change here, write that down. I want a change there, write that down. I want a change there, write that down. And the Lord has gone beyond reading what you have written down. And what you forgot to put in that writing, the Lord has added to that. Yeah. And then your change has now come. Yeah. I'm coming to a point number two here. Number two is to believe for the better. Believe for the better. Believe for the better. After somebody has seen himself, herself, going down and down and down and has tried everything he could try and nothing seemed to work, the, the person just says, I don't know whether anything will happen again. Where there is life, there is hope. There is hope for you. I said there is hope for you. Amen. The dreams, people who know us and people who love us, the dreams they had for us, the dreams we had for ourselves, and the dreams our teachers and our mentors, the dreams they had for us, they're still lower than the dream God has for you. And the Lord will make you climb up. I'm climbing. I am climbing. I am climbing. And all those good dreams that your people had for you, you'll get to that dream. But you're not going to stop there. You're going to be better than that. You'll climb to the dream of the Almighty God for you. And when you get to that top, and then you look back at what you were, what you were before the great change came. I thank the Lord. Joy, happiness, gratitude will never leave your mouth. Believe for the better. Look at Ezekiel chapter 36. I'm reading from verse 11. And I will multiply upon you man and beast. And they shall increase and bring forth fruit. I'm looking at fruitful people today. And I will settle you after your old estate and will do better unto you. God says he will do better unto you. The Almighty says he will do better unto you than at your beginnings. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Now, believe. What do I believe? What do you believe? Number one, believe in God. Number one, believe in God. The Lord Jesus said in John chapter 14 verse 1, he says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Number two, believe the gift, the gift with a capital G, that is Christ himself, that the Lord, the heavenly Father, has given to us as the gift. John chapter 4, verse 10, it says, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that said to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him and who have given you living waters. He will give you today. Yeah. You believe God, you believe the gift of God, Jesus Christ. Number three, you believe the gospel, the good news. That the good news is for you. And the good news will come to your life and cancel every bad news out of your life in Jesus' name. 
Bad news that will never make it. Bad news when daddy got to this age. There's a calamity that happened. When mommy got to this stage, that's the calamity that happened. When your senior brothers and sisters got to this, it's like it's running in the family. Bad news. The gospel has come. The good news has come to cancel every bad news out of your life. Mark chapter 1, verse 15, and seeing the time is fulfilled. Your time has come. And the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Believe the gospel. You know, uh, what happens in our lives is because of what we have heard, what we have seen, what we have felt, we begin to think about those things and believe those things because we have, be, we have tried everything. We have tried to open every door and no door got opened. We have come to believe now that it's like that thing will never happen again. But believe the gospel. Are you there? Yes. I said, believe the gospel. I said, believe the gospel. Let, let, me, let me tell you this. But before I tell you, I want you to say, I am not a grasshopper. <laughs> Scientists performed an experiment. They had a glass jaw, jug, and then they put a grasshopper inside. They closed it with um, a glassy lid. And the grasshopper jumped and jumped and jumped. And it said reached the level that is the ceiling. And couldn't come out. Tried again, tried again. And tried many times. And never made it. And then later they removed the glass lid over that glass jug and the grasshopper never never made any attempt before i tried and there's a ceiling there and then when the ceiling had been removed stopped trying i come to give you good news you are not a grasshopper what you tried before you jumped and the ceiling brought you down. You jumped again and the ceiling brought you down. After this event today, go and try that thing again. The lead has been taken off. Good news, good news that all the bad news of the past, everything is now taken away. Number four, believe his greatness. Believe his greatness. You feel small. You feel unachieving. You feel impossibility. Believe his greatness. Look at Jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 32. And we're looking at verse, uh, we're looking at verse 17 there. Ah, Lord God, behold, that was made the heaven and the earth by thy great power, by thy great power, by thy great power, and stretch out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Our God is great. He can turn every negative thing into positive in your life. It can turn every disappointment to his appointment in your life. It can take the dis disadvantage of your life and make it an advantage. He is so great that he doesn't find anything impossible. Believe his greatness. Number five. Believe is goodness. Look at Psalm 145. I'm reading from verse 9. Psalm 145, reading from verse 9. The Lord is good to all. 
even to me. The Lord is good to all. Somebody there says, I'm coming from a village. The Lord is good to all. Somebody says there, I'm not from a Bible-believing family. The Lord is good to all. Somebody there says that, our teacher has not even showed up now for some months, for some years. He is good to all. Somebody says, I always find misfortune in my life. And where I wanted to get to, I'm giving up. No, no, don't give up. The Lord is good to how many people? Let me hear you. Is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. Believe is goodness. Number six, believe is gifts in you. The gift he has taught in you. There is no creation of God that God has not put something into their lives. When we were very young, maybe you were listening to your parents talking and Everything they had in their heart, in their mind, they could express. And your little mind said, I'll never be able to talk like that. I have all these ideas in my mind, in my heart. And all you could do like, like a baby is only to scream and to cry and to kick so that they will, your mother will say, okay, this is what she needs, so this is what he needs. You, you thought you could never express yourself. Look at you today in the passage of time, anything you want to say, now you can say. You want to ask, you want to demand. Now everything is there. Why? Because God has given us that gift within us. That in whatever language, where we grow up at least, we can pick up that language. And you thought, I'll never be able to learn engineering. Yes, you can. I'll never be able to repair that. Yes, you can. I'll never be able to... How can a medical doctor, you know, you you have this symptom, this idea, and he knows this is the medicine that will feed. Another one comes and they say, that's the thing that will feed. I can never be like that. Yes, you will be like that. All these teachers, that teacher comes to the class, and when he takes on this subject, he, he even teaches without notes. And he amazes me the way he even talks about that thing. I can never be like that. You will be like that. Because the Lord has given the gift inside you there, that gift will come out. My gift will come out. Look at James chapter 1 verse 17. James chapter 1 verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. What I see in that man, what I see in that mentor, what I see in that great teacher, what I see in that great achiever, what I see in that professional is a gift that came from above. And as the rain comes from above for everyone, my own too has come. My own has come. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Yours will get to you there. Only don't envy another person and don't try like copycat. I'll do what they are doing. That's their gift. You look at yourself, what skill has he given me? And what gift has he given me? What talent has he given me? Put that to work and you will succeed. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. What if all the men, all the women in the world, okay, let's, let's talk about the world, in your city, in your state, all the men, they are all medical doctors and there is no tailor. No tailor. Everybody says, I'm a doctor, medical doctor, I'm a nurse, I'm into medicine. And everybody quits tailoring what were you wear. What if everybody is a medical doctor and there's no engineer? 
And we cannot build the bridge. We cannot construct the road. We cannot build the buildings. Where are we going to live? How do we move from place to place? God doesn't want everybody to be engineer. Everybody to be doctor. There will be tailors. And whatever the gift the Lord has given you, you will use it, you will excel. I will use my gift. I will excel. You're not going to look at that and look at that and look at that. Different people there. And then you say you depreciate, you belittle, you put down the gift the Lord has given you to use for the benefit of humanity. Because you've seen that person with that other gift. Your gift is as good as any other person's gift. They use theirs, they excel. You will use your own, you will excel. Yeah. Number seven, believe his glory is for you. Believe that his glory is for you. Don't say, he can shine, but I cannot shine. No, don't say that. Don't say, they can make it, but I cannot make it. Don't say they can be clean, they can be glorious, they can be gracious, they can have a spotless life, but I cannot uh -uh, believe his glory. I see his glory on you. I see his glory in your life. In 2 Peter chapter 1, reading from verse 3, according as his divine power, he has given unto us all things that pertain to life. Everything you'll ever need. All the resources you will need to make a good life, a great life, a gracious life, a glorious life, God has given unto you. How do I know? Well, he gives you leg to walk. There must be a reason for that. He gave you hands to, ha to handle, to hold. There must be a reason for that. He gave you a brain to think, to learn. There must be a reason for that. He gave you a mind, a sound mind, that you can think and you can plan and say, this is where I'm going and young course, young course, you are going to get there. And so now he gives us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory. He has called you to glory. He has called you to glory. He has called you to glory. How about all the shame of the past in my life? No, he didn't call you to that. You know, sometimes we're, you know, going to a particular place and we didn't look at the road map or the signboard or we didn't listen to, you know, the thing that guides us and say this, we turn there turn, and we turned at the wrong corner. And then when we got to the wrong corner, we kept on moving and moving. And then we asked somebody, is this destination on this road? And they said, no. They said, that way you were walking before turn back. And then you turn back and you take the right road. And you'll forget all the wrong roads you've taken before. Because now you're going to be on the right path. I'm going to be on the right lane. It's called me to glory. It's called you to glory. And whatever way you have missed in the past, there is correction that heaven is going to make in your life. And then you come back to the right road. And they look in front of you. There's glory in front of you. Can you see? Can you see? Can you see? Look at yourself. Look at yourself. Look up. And then as bright as the heavens are, that is how bright your life will be. I see glory in front of you. But you have to believe that. You have to believe that. It's not just because I said it. Because the word of God said it. I believe in God. I believe in his gift. I believe the gospel. I believe his greatness. I believe his goodness. I believe the gifts in me. And I believe the glory ahead of me. 
in a few years time if Jesus tarries that glorious destination you are looking for you'll soon get there yeah. glory glory yeah. glory yeah. before you in Jesus name yeah. now we behold so that we can be calm we believe in order to be better. And now, number three, number three, we begin so as to benefit. You know, there are salmon collectors. They come, they collect the salmon, they put it in a big notebook, and they store it away. Another program comes, the salmon collectors, message collectors, they collect and put it in a file somewhere. And then another program comes and they collect that uh, program and they file it up somewhere. They go about as salmon message collectors. But you know, my brother, my sister, it is what you do with the message that puts you on top. It is what you do with the idea that puts you on top. It is what you do with the vision. You must do something. That's what puts you on top. Somebody was going to enter a village, as I read, and he saw an old man there. And he said, um, Sir, is any doctor ever born in this place? And the old man said, no. Any engineer ever born in this place? The man said, no. Then he mentioned other professionals. Anyone like this born in this place? The man said, no. Oh, the man said, uh, this is not where the kind of place I want to live. So the old man said, come. They are not born doctors here. They are born as babies. They are not born engineers here. They are born as babies. They are not born as artists here. They are born as babies. But those babies, they began to do something that will lead them to becoming an engineer. And those babies, some of them, they began to do something that will make them end up as a professional. It's what we begin to do that will germinate in our lives, that will raise us up, and then will become for us to benefit. Now, somebody wants scholarship. Before you benefit from the scholarship, begin something. Begin something. Even if it is to go and take a form. Even if it is to go and fill the form. Even if it is to check up on the internet. Do something. Begin. It is in the beginning that we are going to have benefits. I'm talking to you then. You will begin. I said you will begin. You will not be a collector of messages and sermons. You look to the look at Isaiah chapter 45, and I'm reading from verse 22. Look unto me. Look unto me. Are you looking down? Look up. Are you looking by the sides? Look up. Are you looking at your past? Look up. Are you looking at your problems? Look up. Because if you keep on looking at what you have always been looking at, you'll be so discouraged and downtrodden, you will not try anything. Change the direction in which you are looking and look unto me. And be ye saved and be ye healed and be ye delivered, and be ye lifted up, and be ye transformed, look unto the Lord. Every change you are asking for, every change you dream of, God is the one that will do it. It says, look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. When 
Babies are born, they're so attached to their mother. They're so attached to the home that they never want to be alone and go anywhere. Mommy must be there. They sleep in at night and they turn the light off. And then the baby asks, Mommy, are you there? Yes, I am here. That's only when the child can sleep well. But the time comes that we have to leave mommy holding onto her apron and go to school. And it's, it brings discomfort to us. And that first day we're leaving mommy to go to school, we cry and cry and cry. How could I be separated from mommy? Because you thought you are actually part of mommy until you now begin to consider I'm breathing without mommy breathing for me. I'm eating without mommy eating for me. I'm going there without mommy doing that for me. And then you can look away and then look in the direction that life will take you to. It is when you begin that and you look away from what you were looking at in the past that now progress will begin for you. I said for you now, what do we do as we look to the Lord? Number one, begin with the birth. Begin with the birth. The doctor has to begin with the birth. Engineer, begin with the birth. Professional, begin with the birth. You have to be born first. And if God is going to do anything for you in his family, you have to begin with the birth. That's why Jesus said, except a man, except a woman, except a person be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Marvel not at this, except you are born again, you cannot see, you cannot enter into the kingdom that the kingdom of Christ that the kingdom of uh, you know professionals and the kingdom of you know all the various areas of life begin with the birth you come to the Lord and you see Lord I know the place to begin is the place of birth I want to begin number two bar and ban the beast Bar and ban the beast. The beast is the devil. Revelation gives him the title. The beast. He will want to, you know, take over your life. He cannot manage his own life. He cannot maintain his own position when he was in heaven as Lucifer. He cannot be in a place that is good. And after he spoiled his own destiny, he wants to come to you. And then he has the people, young fellows, the boys, girls, they do not understand why they do what they do, why they say what they say. And I want to be like the beast in your life. You see, if I, get on, if I get hooked to this one, I'll never make it. If I get, you know, I'm interested in this and, you know, they say, why go to school? Why? Why do any profession? Uh, you can get money in this other way. What's your goal? Is it not to get money? Not really. Not really. Yes, you want to get money, but the Lord has knowledge that he has taught in the world. And I don't want to come to this world and everything my heavenly father has made, I know next to nothing. He's the creator of mathematics and I know next to nothing. He's the creator of those great subjects, I know next to nothing. He's the creator of the oil in the soil, I know next to nothing. He's the creator of the minerals inside the soil and I came to this world as the child of the heavenly father and everything the Lord my, my father has made, I know next to nothing. No, no, money is not the final thing. I want knowledge. 
image. I want insight. I want to be able to see and, and uh, glorify God because I appreciate the beauty that God has made in the world. And so it's not just money and the beasts that will come to your life, that will try to attach themselves to your life. They say, why are you going to school? Why are you trying this? Why are you trying that? Your bar, the beast out of your life, they will not control your life. They will not control your thoughts. And they will not control your movement in Jesus' name. Yeah. Number three, break the bondage. Break the bondage. Now, when we talk about bondage, there is bondage to drugs, there is bondage to alcohol, there is bondage to smoking, there is bondage to everything that is bad and evil in the world. But... Once that bondage is there, the bondage limits you. Let me explain. A baby elephant was born, and then they took a heavy chain and wound it around the leg of that baby elephant. And they attached the end of that chain to a pole. And that baby elephant wanted to move forward. She, he was struck back because of the chain. Tried, tried, tried. And the chain, the length of the chain, determined the radius of the circle in which it could move. And later, as the elephant was growing and growing and growing, they changed that chain to a thread and its weight and its force can easily pull the thread and it will escape but no he was already conditioned to that little circle think about the friends you have friends of a little circle they can only think of breakfast and lunch and dinner once they have that, their little circle is all right. They can only think of the little dress they wear. Once they have that, their circle of satisfaction, all that is there. They can only think of boyfriend, girlfriend. And once that little circle is there, they're satisfied. But today, the Lord will break the bondage. Whatever you are attached to, whatever bondage you have, the Lord breaks that today out of your life in Jesus' name. I'm rejoicing with you. Bondage will be broken out of your life. There is um, one young man, Joe by name. He had a big dream. He wanted to be a successful professional businessman. But suddenly, that idea, that vision, that dream was cut short. Why? Because he found himself sold to drugs and to crimes. He became mentally unstable. And he was admitted into psychiatric hospital bondage. But, somebody help me say but. After an impactful experience at the global program, his life was completely changed. Turned around. Transformed. I thought you really do clapping. Joe, thank you. God bless you. Joe, are you there? Can you talk to people like you and let them know that whatever bondage today, the Lord will break that thing. Welcome, Joe. Uh, kiss you is a very hopeless kiss. I, <laughs> I just give glory to God for helping me out. Uh, in the middle of nowhere, I found myself so into drugs. 
I can't really tell how it started, but it just started and it went on for years, three years, four years, five years, up to like seven years, lost two different admissions on drugs. I was into internet for a star. Uh, it was, I was so deep into it. Mm. I formed myself in Lagos and from Lagos, drugs took control of me. I, they said I, I'm mad, I don't know, but uh, from Lagos, they brought me down to Sakachi Hospital over here in Kwara State. Um, for, I was there for months. After I got discharged with the drugs they gave me, I couldn't even stop smoking. Sometimes I leave church service to smoke at the slightest urge of smoke. I just have to go after it. And it just happened um, during the wonders of the cross crusade. Something just told me I should go to church that day. And I was there sitting at the back. Even before that, the Kumi started praying, I just noticed something had happened. It was as if I was brought out of a pit. I was free, just like that. Although I, I couldn't tell what happened, even though I knew something happened, uh, getting home the first day, no urge. Wow, I didn't notice. Second day, I started sleeping well over the night because as a result of the drugs I was taking, I couldn't sleep. Third day, I, I can't smoke. And from then to now, I've not tested drugs, my joanna. Even when I sit beside someone smoking, my stomach will start turning me. It's either I witness to the person or I just leave. When I see that it's someone that I can't witness to, I just leave. But since then, I can't stand the smell or the sight of anyone smoking. And it's just wonders. You know, I've been hearing of it, but it happens to me. And I can say God is really good. And I just want to give glory to God. Today I have a son. Um, today I witness to people. Today my life is amazing. Turn around and uh, I'm just happy. The joy of the Lord is so overwhelming and I just give glory to God. Maybe somebody is in jail as we speak or somebody is doing drugs. Um, somebody, you know, living a, a life that is not supposed to live. Tell him from your experience, what should he be doing? I right want to now? tell you that I know how you feel. Uh, sometimes you might think there is no hope, but I want to tell you there is hope in Jesus and he has not forgotten about you. He's out there waiting for you, knocking on the door of your heart. Just open up for him and there will be a change. Thank you, Joe. We believe that God, who is impartial, what he has done for him, he'll do for everyone. One, begin with the birth. Two, ban and bar the beast. Three, break the bondage. Four, build the bridge. Build the bridge. We need connection. The connection to God will build the bridge by repentance. I turn my back on the things I've been doing. I believe on the Lord Jesus. Build the bridge. Build the bridge with your parents. You have, uh, you know, gone away. Your mind is away from your parents. You don't even want to hear the voice of your mommy or your daddy. Build the bridge. Come back home and say, Daddy, I'm sorry, I'm back. You're building the bridge. Mommy, I'm sorry, I'm back. You're building the bridge. Build the bridge with your future, your education. Dust the books and say, I come back. And then oh, when you come back to first start reading, uh, it's like uh, you'll feel some discomfort. Stay there and be in control of your body. Don't say, I rise up and go and play. I rise up. Build the bridge. And then uh, your profession, you lost one job and you want to get another job, but you have given up. You depend now on charity. Give me this and give me that. Uh -uh. Build the the bridge. The bridge is what connects you with your future. All the bridges that have broken down your life, build everything. The sky is your limit. Number five, behave 
the beatitude. The beatitude, those are the words of Jesus. Blessed are the poor in spirit. There's the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn. You're sorrowful for your past. It says you'll be comforted. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are they that thirst and hunger after righteousness. For they shall be filled. Blessed are the meek. They shall inherit the earth. And blessed are the pure in heart. And they shall see God blessed are the peacemaker, be child of peace, a promoter of peace. Behave the beatitude. Number six, bring back the Bible. It's the word of God. It's the word of faith. It's the word that will build your personality. Everything that is broken down in your life, it is the word, the Bible, that will build you up. And I see you there, not the way you are now. I see you the way you are going to become. Strong, mighty, achieving, being a conqueror in your life in Jesus' name. Number one, begin with the bird. Two, bar and ban the beast. Three, break the bondage. Four, build the bridge. Five, behave the beatitude. Six, bring back the Bible. Seven, be the best. Be the best. Where is he? Where is she there? The best. The best your village has ever produced. The best your stage has ever known. The best that our beloved country has ever known. Possible? Of course. Me? Of course. You are the candidate for the best. Yeah. You're not competing with any other person. I want to be better than this and better than that. No. I want to be better in myself than I was yesterday. And when tomorrow comes, I want to be better than what I was the previous day. And when the week, the next week comes, I want to be better than what I was the earlier week. And the next month comes, I want to be better than what I was the other month. And when the next year comes, I want to be better than I was the other year. A better man, a better husband, a better professional, a better wife, a better mother, a better person that when eventually I leave this world, I will know by the help of God, in the grace of the Lord, I have been the very best I could ever be. How does that happen? Look unto me. I'm be saved. I'm be delivered. And he held and he lifted up all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. This is your day. This is your time. Don't think about any other thing now. Think about the Lord. Behold him and you will become what he has made you to be. And believe him. And your life will be better. And begin to have the benefit. Amen. 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 Are you ready? Yeah. The hand of the Lord will remold you. Yeah. Will remake you. Yeah. Will refashion you. Yeah. This day will be the first day of climbing to higher ground. Why are you there? Rise right, so, up and say, Lord, forget about everybody. Forget about them, about whoever. And say, Lord, I come. I surrender my life completely into your hand. I'm going to begin at the beginning. That is at the birth. That as you believe in the Lord, and as you give yourself over completely unto the Lord, the change, 
glorious change, great change, heavenly change, the Lord will make. He'll make a better person out of you. If you are putting yourself in the hand of the Almighty God now, wherever you are, just raise up your hand. We're not going to take time. I'll pray for you. You say, Lord, I want this moment to be the beginning of a new life. And I want to begin at this birth. God bless you. Raise up that hand. Raise up that hand. Nobody is going to embarrass you. Just, just raise up there. Father, in the name of Jesus, you are the God of all flesh. You know everyone. I pray, Lord, all their sins of the past, you forgive and erase and blot out of their lives in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, new life you grant unto them. That your grace that forgives and sets free will come to them right now. And the power, the strength to move on and live a life much, much better, higher, greater than we ever lived. Grant unto everyone in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Say thank you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Now, the universal change, the unique change that God is going to make in your life. Anything that needs changing, you can't limit God. You might limit yourself, but can you limit God? We're going to pray now that God will take you. No matter where you are now, he'll take you from where you are. He'll take you to the place he has ordained that you will be. Can I hear your amen? The great change has come for you. Everyone, everyone, everyone raise up your hand now. This is for everyone. Father, we thank you. You're a God of love, a God of mercy, a God of goodness, and you are great. You are greater than we can imagine. I bring everyone here Everyone on the platform, everyone in the congregation, every boy, every girl, every man, every woman, every father, every mother, every husband, and every wife. I bring everyone before you, Lord. And I'm asking, lift up everyone. Yeah. Whatever ties us down to mediocrity, break the yoke in Jesus' name. And whatever failure we're used to, we say, yes, that's my Lord, that's my love, that's my whatever. I pray you take that failure and defeat from every life in Jesus' name. Whatever has kept us down in fear, that we're not even asking for how to move forward anymore, how to be what we ought to be. I pray that fear, you knock it out of every life. Blot it out of every life. Lord, give everyone here, everyone there, online, everywhere, the spirit of the conqueror, the spirit of the achiever. And Lord, we will make our lives, we will make our world better for your glory. And whatever prayer anyone is praying, whatever desire anybody has, whatever plan anybody has, whatever dream anyone has, I pray you bring resources of heaven and fulfill that dream. And fulfill that goal. Take everyone from the past, bring us to the present, bring us to the future. Lift up everyone Amen. to the top and the peak of achievement of the conqueror in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. By faith, we see it has happened. Amen. By your power, we know nothing will hinder this. Amen. Confirm it, Lord, in every life. Amen. The great change. In Jesus' name we pray. Congratulations. The Lord has done it in your life.